Hi, this is Nancy Heinz Glazer with Meet the Artist, and I'm excited again, as always, to have a wonderful area artist with acclaim right here. And tonight I'm with Eric Beckerich, who is, uh, how you doing? <laughs> You're so amazing. I found out about you, and ever since I have, I'm seeing you everywhere. Uh -huh. um, and you have here some of your amazing pieces of work, Eric, but you've been kind of a discovery for me. I, I saw you here, I saw you there, and then I met you and knew I had to have you on the show. But how well, long have you been doing your art? Well, I've been doing this uh, modern mixed media work for a couple of years. And uh, I started showing at the library, and uh, from there I was asked to partake in the uh, Maplewood South Orange Artist Tour. They told me they wanted me on the artist tour, so uh, that was it. I, I started showing there, and uh, I started coming out to openings and meeting the people, and uh, we have so many great artists in the Essex County and Maplewood South Orange region that uh, it's been a, a great joy for me and uh, a learning experience and uh, a lot of fun to come out, show my work, and to, uh, you know, You've been doing it a while. It's just that you weren't in my on my radar screen, and I'm not quite sure why. But um, I I started hearing the same Eric Becker, Eric Becker, Eric Becker. Oh, uh, nice. and you were here, and you were there, and that you know where you were at the Cooperman Gallery at JCC, and then you were in uh, Orange in the Valley Arts District, and then you were on the Artist Tour, and and I remember just starting to see you everywhere. So within the last two years, you've really kind of with this work burst on the scene, right? Yeah, yeah, with, 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 with this work, uh, everybody has given me amazing attention. Sometimes I still am um, in, in wonder that uh, I get so much uh, attention for it, but uh, it is kind of nice. I still blow my own mind making it, and uh, it's been uh, great. I've been showing constantly for the last uh, year and a half. Uh, I have another show opening Friday. I'm, Still showing at the JCC. Uh, this one. Yeah, the uh, I, I love like birds. birds or I, li I like I like birds. birds yeah, uh, and uh, of course, living in Jersey, everybody loves birds. So uh, you have to. <laughs> yes. Uh, and that's in Jer in Newark. So uh, you, yeah, that that's is, in Newark. Is that you going to be your first foray into the Newark scene, or have you been? Yes, there before? that's the first time. I, I answered a call on Facebook for uh, City Without Walls asking for some uh, work with birds. And uh, when I lived in Hoboken, which I lived before I moved to Maplewood, uh, I did a lot of sketching and painting of the sparrows on my windowsill. I had you know, to put the uh, food out on the fire escape and uh, feed the sparrows. And then I started sketching them and painting them. And so I do have a small painting from the 80s that's going to be in the show in Newark at the uh, Arts Kitchen opening this Friday. And uh, so. No, is that arts or arts kitchen? Arts, arts <laughs> no, kitchen. No, no, you can't take the you can't take the Bronx out of the guy. You I are guess from not. The Bronx. My, my wife is always telling me I'm leaving letters out of words. She <laughs> says it's not tree, it's three. <laughs> and I say, okay, very good. But the whole bird theme has uh, gone through my work. Uh, I was recently featured in the Essex Arts Quarterly, and they have one of my sculptures, which uh, is informed by my work with birds. And it's called birds. So somebody knew about that. And well, and in Essex Arts, they also have a lot of a heavy focus on environmental uh, interest, um, reuse, recycle, and renew, or whatever. There's an awful big push in the Essex County arena for sustainable yes. art and yes. reusing materials. So found object work is yeah. very well thought of. I have been asked to show in a couple of uh, shows that had to deal with recycling and stuff, but I just use such a small amount of things recycling. That well, but you're recycling uh, little pieces of wood and pieces yeah, there of is, metal Yeah, there are some find. things. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I work in construction, and uh, I use a lot of just found objects, uh, particularly gravel and things like that, because gravel comes in sizes. So, uh, you know, I've used two-inch squares, so... You know, two-inch gravel is what you see in a lot of construction sites. So uh, you, you pick up a handful of gravel, you have uh, a number of pieces that are any size from two inches down to, uh, you know, a quarter of an inch. So you already have a palette of sizes to work with. So it's pretty easy composing with that. So uh, that's how I started doing. I really don't plan on anything when I, when I start working. I just have some wet mortar and uh, some pieces and... Uh, 
I go with it. And you put, and you were showing me some of the cubes that you use, which is actually, it's a, is that a testing cube that you might yeah, use we, we, on a worksite? Yeah, we used to use two-inch cubes to test uh, mortar. Now we use a cylinder. But, uh, um, yeah, I started using the two-inch cubes, and uh, there was two-inch gravel, so it just made a lot of design sense to uh, work with it. And even the first piece I did, which is like uh, this one, which isn't exactly the first one, but it was just I had some extra mortar on my table in the lab and uh, where I do sampling, and uh, I picked up a couple of pieces of wood on the floor and just stuck it in the mortar, and when I let it dry, I brought it home. My wife said, you know, it's so zen. It's just so cool. I mean, and it's just a very simple design thing. You put ten verticals in a row, you got a conversation going on. So uh, I started doing that and experimenting with some other shapes and the wheel and just very basic things. And then I just kind of exploded into it. <laughs> and uh, I started seeing all kinds of ways. I started just burying things in the mortar and popping it while it was still green, which means before it's really set, and scraping it out with a screwdriver and just composing and doing this whole uh, stream of conscious kind of thing. And uh, it's just kind of a cliche, but uh, you know, you really like to be in the moment what you do in your artwork. This is the the, uh, the saving grace behind a lot of this stuff. Uh, so, uh, and that's how it started. And so since then, uh, I've just been going to it, and I've, I've been asked to one show after the other. So. Uh, now, where did you go? You graduated uh, high school where? Well, I, I went to the, in the Bronx. I Bronx? went to Catholic. I went. I graduated from St. Helena's High School, and uh, from there I went to a. Uh, which was called New York City Community College, which I think is called uh, New York Tech now. And I got a two-year degree in graphic arts. And I wasn't happy working in the graphic arts. I used to fall asleep at the board there. So uh, I went back to school, got my uh, BFA in fine art and sculpture in Memphis. I just said, let me get out of the city. Let me go someplace else. Let me do my work. And then uh, things haven't been the same since. I mean, I've worked in, in art, but... Uh, when I was graduating, the whole punk music scene was going on in the city, so I said, I'm going back to New York, I'm going to make a band, and we're going to play, and, and I did. And, uh, and I worked in, in, the graph, in the display art, doing scenery painting and design renderings and things like that, and uh, you know, it was uh, fine, but uh, the, the business kind of collapsed in the early 80s, so uh, I got a job in designing construction with Time Equities uh, doing co-ops down in the village. Greenwich Village, and uh, so I kept my hand in my, my work doing sketches and stuff like that, but I was making some serious money for uh, a kid from the Bronx, so, uh, but recently, about five years ago, I started saying, well, you know, where's the art? Where did it go? And I've been looking for uh, things to do, so. Uh, and you found them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, You were looking and didn't have to look that far, because this is really kind of up your alley. At your day job or your other job besides being an art well the third job besides being an artist and a musician is right what is it that you do I am a certified masonry inspector I uh, build public schools I make sure everything is being done to uh, plan and spec uh, I do mortar sampling for uh, testing labs and uh, I do my 40 hours and then I do my art and my music so uh, for another 80. <laughs> for, well, I used to yeah, work. I was busy. a super. I was a you know, construction super for so many years, and I think I worked every Saturday for 20 years and, uh, and many Sundays. So uh, now I just do my 40 hours. I'll, I'll work more sometimes, but, uh, and I'll spend another 20, 30 hours on my art now, which is uh, very good for me right now. And then you spend time on your music, but that always gets me confused. Because I don't know, there don't seem to be enough hours in the day to do the work, the artwork, the music, the, yeah. you know, setting up shows, going around to shows, doing your mortar work. I don't know how you do that. Well, well, uh, the mortar work is very time sensitive, so it doesn't really need a lot of work working at this scale. So, uh, you know, you, you do the piece, then you got to let it set, and then you know you pop it or, or take it out, and then you can do a few things when it's in the green stage, but you can't do too much because you don't want to break it. So it'll dry another cause, uh, another few days, and uh, you can do certain things: add another line, scratch it out. Uh, you know, it's uh, 
You kind of leave it go for the moment. And it's forgiving. I mean, really, if you don't like it, you just do it again. Is that how it works? Well, or? you know, it's uh, it's kind of forgiving. You know, uh, like any uh, American abstract uh, artist, you got to embrace the accident. You got to employ the accident. You know, and uh, uh, and and you do uh, because. Uh, a lot of times I drop things just to see what happens. and uh, You put them in the mortar, just drop it in there? Yeah, I just drop it in or I'll drop it on the floor too to see, really? <laughs> see well, what and, happens. Yeah, when I was at, you were showing me your work, you were scraping out. So the area surrounding the object you've put in there yes, is, I, I, is I off I put certain list. things in that, that can come out. I mean, I've even burned things out of uh, cubes before or, uh, you know, you kind of... Uh, liberate the objects you stick in a mold. When you uh, make something like this, and you pull it out of the mold, it's pretty much uh, smooth because it all falls to the side. So, you know, you start washing it off and you start revealing certain aspects of the work and then uh, you uh, you make certain decisions there. That's the way I want it, you know. Then you, you, you start doing an all-around survey of the object and uh, think what you would like to do with it. So. Uh, but then you have to also take a look at assembling it and putting it into some sort of a semblance of an overall piece. How do you do that? I mean, I'd like to talk about some of what you have in there, too, but how do you, once you get the piece complete, how do you figure out how to well, lay it next to each other or decide? Uh, uh, is that sort of sculptural? That really is a sculptural yeah, arrangement? Yeah, well, that, that's uh, another thing. You're kind of making bits and pieces. A lot of times I'm happy just with the cube by itself, and I, and I leave it that way. But a lot of times you're, you're working a, in a certain frame of mind or with certain sized objects. Now, I was just looking at this. This is inch and a half gravel in this piece here, so it's, it has a, a different kind of a Well, a you, can tell, for it. you can tell also the texture and the color changes. Yeah. I have about a minute and a half left before we go to break, but... Do you start out knowing which of the which of the gravel, which of the mortar, which of the anything you're going to use, or is that also an accident? Th that's pretty is it much what you're using uh, for that week. Or, uh, I mean, um, yeah, you know, you you start to compose in, in in shades, and like I have different bags of mortar in my basement, and you start working in one kind of gray or a white mortar. Like I used a lot of white mortar in here, and I've been kind of mixing and matching a red mortar. I don't have, well, his, this is a red mortar here, and. Uh, you start just having pre preferences based on uh, whatever. You know but you I mean? don't even know what you're going to do when you start out. So how do you know yeah. how to make that selection? Is it how you're, I'm in a red clay day, or how do you decide well, that? Uh, yeah, you, you kind of say, well, I'm going to start doing red, and uh, or I'm going to start doing a gray or a white, or uh, and you make pieces. Well, you have an idea if you're going to make a, a cube all around. These are more uh, just... Uh, Forward, uh, they're more of um, what do you call it? Reliefs, where, where these are all around four sides. I've been making bigger ones that are all six sides that you could pick up and hold like this. But uh, you kind of go with it. And uh, on a Saturday you do big, and on a Sunday you do small. But we, yeah, I have thirty seconds left before the break. But what amazes me is the idea that there's so many choices within this. My head's already spinning with You can't mortar. get involved in it. You just need to start doing it. All right, okay. Well, when we come back, we'll hear some more about how Eric Beckerich does that. Thanks for joining us. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Attorney General Martha Coakley. If you have trouble making mortgage payments or are facing foreclosure, Ask your lender about a loan modification. Some businesses may try to charge you advance fees for this service. This is illegal. Nonprofit housing counselors are available for free in most communities. For more information, visit our website at mass.gov backslash AGO or call us at 617-727-8400. And welcome back. It's Nancy Heinz Glazer for Meet the Artist with Eric Beckerich, mortar guy, musician, artist, fabulous person, and he's everywhere. And we went to break, and I was just asking you how you decide which kind of gravel mortar, what color to use. Um, and on a Saturday, it's gray, but that's not 
it just sort of happens. You just go down to what you have. As you know, I, I really don't worry. I really don't worry about it that much. I okay. kind of and, and I and I don't like to. I kind of say, give me anything, and if you arrange it correctly, you start to develop a language and a conversation, and you, you can make art. Okay, and maybe it's been so many years that, uh, you know, I just I don't sweat it anymore. But I just I just don't. I just start working and. Usually I'll make a certain amount of pieces in a certain mood or a certain size gravel I'll have around and uh, it kind of works that way. And uh, so I've, been, I've been getting great results. I've started making some bigger pieces and collecting some bigger rocks <laughs> and stuff right, like that, but right. it gets very heavy, but I'm working around it. Well, that's also, you know, I know that a lot of sculptors have a problem, first of all, where they can actually do the work, so they almost always have to get a studio. Right. which is an additional cost. If you're a woman sculptor, it's exceptionally difficult. You don't have the physical strength. If you're right. older, you know, so people begin to change. Um, I know the medium that they use, sometimes through time, cost, room, it's all those things. You have a nice house, you have a nice basement and a nice yard, um, and so you can go bigger if that's the choice you do, right? Yes, I, mean, that's I, what you I have recently to do. made like a three and a half foot by four foot uh, sculpture that's in my backyard, and I, you know I used I used the ground and I used the uh, uh, the surroundings to be as part of the sculpture because so many people told me I have like a really uh, architectural and archaeological uh, feeling about your work. A lot of it looks like you dug it up and. Uh, which is uh, good because, uh, you know, I like that timelessness. People tell me it looks like, again, prehistoric art. And some people say, you know, it looks like computer chips. So, uh, you know, I kind of have a lot of things going with it. So, uh, and I spend a lot of time analyzing. Why is this working? How is it working? Uh, you know, giving it a, a, my own critique. And uh, you just come to uh, see that, uh, you know, it's mortar. I'm using uh, very uh, geometrical shapes to start with. I mean, columns and... Uh, and these look like teeth, you know, to me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, in my dentist's yes, office. Yes, I, I know. I, I gave one to my dentist. He charged me for two visits. I there. swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, because that's what it looks like to yes. me. And yet some are um, shells and rock and, and what is that, sea glass? And I mean, just yeah, where so do you find your objects to put in there? Well, uh, again, I find a lot of it just in the gravel and construction sites because they'll, they'll shake out uh, junk in, in different screens and they'll separate it. So you'll find pieces of metal, uh, old glass, uh, new glass, pieces of uh, uh, wood, uh, tile. Uh, I even found false teeth. <laughs> Speaking of that, right? Yeah. So you're really helping the environment. I, I, I guess to a certain are, extent. I, actually, I guess to a certain extent. Because you're right. taking and making something out of something that might have been refuse. Yes, that, that, that could that, that could definitely be, and uh, and you know you you just see that you have certain concerns that you always work with. Uh, I have this photograph here that I just took when I stepped out of my car of some uh, of the my neighbor's house being reflected in the the window, and even here you can see I've, I've got cubes stacked on top of each other with uh, really a. Uh, that's how designs. you see. You, that's what you said. You sort of think that way since yeah, right. you were into architectural yeah. and design concepts. That yeah. must be. Yeah, you get into a certain suited. mode where you're starting to see in in uh, like, sort of like a camera lens in where the directors terms. you know are going around right, like this. Right, right, right. You kind of like, oh, there's a composition here that uh, let me see what I could do with it. And I do a lot of drawing and things based on that. So. Uh, well, when you do your artwork, are you listening to uh, uh, punk? Or are you, li well, I, <laughs> are you uh, listening to any kind of music? Because I'm assuming you have, that's always going in you. You always want to do the music, too. But uh, do you uh, listen to music when you do your work? Or yeah, I, I, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I mean, I, since I do a lot of playing my own music and stuff, too, like that, uh, you kind of just get away from being so involved with what's going on now. I mean... Right now, I take a lot of classic people. You, I'd be more apt to be listening to Dylan or Van Morrison or somebody like that now than listening to punk music. But I, I do pull out the, uh, the uh, old stuff sometimes. And, and you, you did do wop. I uh, mean, yeah. at one point. Well, I right? grew up in the Bronx. Uh, Everybody did do wop in the Bronx. We all, we all, we all did do wop. It was going on all the time on the corner. So uh, uh, when they found out I could sing in the high parts, uh, the guys would say, "Come here, come here, come here. We're going to do this Frankie Lyman song." 
you do on a high part, you know, or, or even the Four Seasons. I would do uh, the falsetto uh, part, and uh, so I've always kind of had been doing music and art, and uh, you know, in, in the Bronx, uh, I always tell the story, and it, and it's true. I was coming home from a pastel class with my little pad and my pastels, and guys were making fun of me, so I beat up beat up this guy, and the next time I came around. And I had my pad, his friend started with me, and he said, no, 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 leave this guy alone. Leave that guy alone. <laughs> you know, so, He's uh, not an artist just per se. He's so, a tough guy. So. Well, well right? you know, part of being uh, from the Bronx was that thing. But, uh, and learning not anymore. how. Not anymore. <laughs> what, some of the other things that you've done, you've done some work with the Maplewood Garden Club. And, uh, yeah, right? uh, besides doing this, I, you know, also, I've always been able to just draw anything, so... The last couple of years for the Maplewood Garden Club, I did the, uh, the illustration on their yearbook. And I did the Duran Hedden House uh, a couple of years ago. And this year I did the Hosta Garden behind the Hilton Library. And uh, Here's your birds. Yeah, that's my Hoboken uh, bird. That's the one I got in the show, uh, I Like Birds. And uh, So you're just sort of a renaissance guy. You do it all, uh, would you say? I, I guess. I guess that's uh, pretty much, you know, I've been uh, very lucky again to be uh, around in uh, so many great artists and musicians and that uh, when I come out and join them, I'm accepted. So it's, uh, it's a good feeling and, uh, and it really uh, fuels the initiative to keep going. So, uh, you know, it's been exciting. Uh, since uh, you, you told me you're interested in doing my show, I've been making sure that I do everything nice. Absolutely, <laughs> you must be right. Now, your wife's a horticulturalist, which I think is sort of also a whole other side of yeah. something interesting, sort of yeah, my growing wife is a or Jersey building girl. or my something. Wife, and uh, she is a horticulturist, and she works, she does a lot of volunteer work with for the DPW and the works with propagating uh, plants in the greenhouse for uh, use in the town. You see all the your beautiful little gardens and plantings they have around town. Well, my wife is involved with a lot of that. She was president of the garden club for the past two years. She's no longer, but... Uh, in Maplewood. Yes, and she's always been involved, so she's been very surprised that uh, I've become, like, social. She, and, uh, so, she uh, was always the one that was involved, and you were always sort of yes. quiet? To yeah, I was always... Uh, well, I was always working. I worked in construction... You know, uh, you know, you being a, a superintendent, you know, you got to be the first guy there, the last guy to leave. So, you know, I worked a lot of hours. I mean, I enjoyed it. You get a certain amount of creative satisfaction out of building things. Uh, you know, um, so uh, it's been good. But I've been really enjoying this new uh, renaissance of sorts into my uh, my work, both uh, the uh, the art aspect and the uh, the music aspect. Well, all I know is you, like I said, was starting out. I, all of a sudden, you were there. You were burst on the scene, huh. and every time I turned around, your name was on a group show or an individual show, or you were at this place or that place. And uh, was that an actual planned move, or did that also kind of happen? It kind of <laughs> like just like your artwork happens. <laughs> yeah, it kind of just just happened. Uh, people's, you know, it's a, a little bit unusual, uh, uh, but also. Yeah. I, it's an unusual medium. This is not something I see okay. all the time. But, you know, and I, but I started composing and using a lot of, uh, you know, things about American abstract expressionism and, and other uh, classical art uh, things to uh, create my work. I mean, I am educated in, in this. Right. So, you're, so. you're college educated. I have say. a college, yes. <laughs> now, when you were in Memphis, did yeah. you... Did you pick up anything uh, music-wise while you were there? Because I understand it's from walking down the street, you know, it comes up out of the ground, that music uh, thing. Yeah, well, Did you know... Did you feel it there, or was it mostly when you were going to college you were doing your art? I was mostly doing my art when I was okay. going to college. I mean, at Memphis, of course, uh, there was some influence there. I got, uh, you know, into a, a lot of rockabilly stuff at the time. There was also a lot of rockabilly used vinyl around, and... Uh, and uh, so I uh, got into that. Uh, I met a lot of uh, artists from that time. I worked in a gas station on the drag between Memphis and Tupelo, Mississippi, and I met Jerry Lee Lewis and Carl Perkins and Tony Joe White. And I even ran into Elvis a couple of times in Memphis. And uh, You're not old enough, are you? Right. Okay, to have run into Elvis. Uh, That's okay. I won't go there. <laughs> How's that? But um, I'm certainly old enough, so maybe you are too. But um, So... When you were there, though, it was really about your art, and then when you came back, you 
you yeah. came back for the music scene. The, the, the music scene kind of just was growing in New York. It, it was very accessible to uh, make a band and go play original music. It wasn't like uh, some kind of a mystery anymore. It was like get a band together. If you're good enough, you can play at CBGB's or you can play at Max's or at Stickball or any number of clubs. And uh, so I did that for a while, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, and then, but what I and what I'm sort of interested in is it's sort of like you have this revolution, and then you have that revolution of a creative yeah. bent. Bent. So it was music now, and you never gave that up. That doesn't mean you give, but one you have more focus on than the other at a different time. Is there something in your life that makes that change, or? Do you just get tired of uh, the music for a while and not go do the art? Or? Well, you know, so, some things, uh, you start doing uh, well in, in, in one area, so you concentrate a lot of time in that. You, you know, your focus becomes that. I mean, right now I'm still doing both the music and the art. And, yeah, I, uh, in my basement I have my, my artwork over here because I do a lot of work at the sink because I work with water and washing this stuff off. And I have my guitars and stuff on the other side. And, uh, you know, I spend... Uh, uh, a half an hour, 45 minutes at least with my artwork every night because I'm working on whatever's in a certain stage. And I make sure I play a few songs every night and uh, stay ready to go play. You're always ready for just about any of it. Yeah, every so once in a while I'll, uh, you know, just walk with my guitar and uh, I pop up some places. And, uh, you know, I play under the name of my uh, old Bronx neighborhood. They used to call me Ronnie Beck, so... Uh, that's uh, your that's yeah. your stage name. Yeah, as Ronnie when I play Beck. music, it's Ronnie Beck. You know, Ronnie Beck, Eric Beckerich, Eric Beckerich, Eric Beckerich are one and the same, AKA, and uh, you know, and uh, recently I was uh, had a show in the Valley Arts District where I had artwork uh, on display, and I was playing in the street, doing some street singing, and collecting some money for Valley Arts, and uh, playing with a few people there, and uh, it was a lot of fun for a couple of days. And then, and then the next time, who knows what we'll see you doing. But I have about a minute or so left. Um, you have this show coming up. Are there other shows that you're planning to do that you know of yet? But then we, we don't know, because that just may happen, too. We, we don't know. Actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start working on, on, on looking for a grant to do my work bigger and uh, have a few ideas and a few people willing to help me with it. And, uh, of course, uh, I mean, this show opens Friday. I still have the ongoing show at JCC until January 1st. Everything's for sale. But, uh, always, <laughs> always, you know, but, almost uh, always. So. Really, but you really, I really, at this point, am still enjoying showing and meeting the artists around there. Other just, artists, networking. Yes, yeah, right. networking and just talking about art. And, you know, I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, Things in this world that aren't so pleasant, but uh, this is one thing that's very pleasant. Absolutely, for me. just and like spe being, speaking to you, Nancy. Speaking is right. to you, Eric. Well, anyway, I have a half a minute, and we've got to go. And I want to say, I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy you burst on the scene, and we're happy you're bursting on the scene for everybody out there in the audience as well. Thanks a lot for joining us. Keep busy. Absolutely. I can't wait till the next time to see what else is next. Uh, I really mean I'm, it. I'm looking forward to the next time, and thank you very much, Nancy. Thanks a lot, and thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed Meet the Artist with Eric Beckerich and me, Nancy Heinz-Blazer.